so one thing that I wanted to show you was actually on how to be able to get a little bit of mobilization in the ankles and even work a little bit of balance. Um, what I want to do first of all is show you with the, um, with the neck pillows, I mean these neck pillows are designed to be able to lie on for, um, for your neck, I'll show that to you in another segment. But what's kind of nice is you can also use these for a little bit of a doming effect um, on your feet. So let me start with those right now. I'm going to put this aside and I'll be standing up so my head will disappear, but you can still hear me. Um, so let me start with, um, this, is, this is the two-in-one combo pillow, which is nice because it has um, an extra little block of wood here. So you can actually um, adjust if you want this to be a higher arc or a little bit lower arc. So with the feet, generally, I go a little bit lower. And if you notice, um, this is the, the Accu um, version of the neck pillow. Um, these little knobs do not come out like they do in the lumbar version. So um, they're, they're planted in there, so just so you know. But, but when you do get the combo pillow, you get, you get both of them. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand up and just allow kind of the mid part of my actually more the ball of the foot, to kind of come around where the apex of the arch is. I have it maybe just a little bit beyond that. And I'm just going to do this with one foot for right now, and I'm just reaching my toes long and trying to see if I can get the knuckles of my feet to appear. Okay, we get a lot of times people get some stiffness in that area of the foot, and that will affect um, some of your foot joint mechanics. So I'm just wrapping the top part of my foot around and then releasing. Okay, and as I'm doing that, I'm just shifting my weight forward just a little bit and release. If you do want to bring it up a little bit, you can. I don't usually have people weight bear this part of the foot, though, because it is your arch, and weight bearing on the arch isn't necessarily what it's been designed for, so um, that's why I tend to prefer this to be um, further forward so we do get more of the mobilization in this part of the foot. Okay? And so you can repeat that, obviously, um, on the other foot, just placing it down allowing your body just to shift forward. So what's nice here is we're able to get that, um, to be able to get that nice, trying to, trying to open up the knuckles here of the foot, but also we're in a little bit of a stretch. Now what you want to watch here is that we keep some energy from the inner part of the arch up through the middle part of the leg, so we're not just letting everything collapse down. And I'm going to do this face on so you can see. But if I were to come in here and without holding everything up, if I just let everything collapse, you can see how I will collapse in a pronation. And if I come forward there, that's actually going to be a really poor, uh, poorly aligned position for my, my lower leg and for my knee. And that can have some ramifications later on. So think about kind of your rotating and spiraling energy around or keeping this energy. It's almost as though you have a string from the inside of your arch. And it's just spiraling around your leg, all the way around the leg, all the way up to the, to the hip. And at the same time, you're still trying to hug the top part of this arc. So we're not just collapsing here, we're creating that energy and that stretch, okay? So you can do that initially on one foot, and then you can go ahead and come on both feet. And once again, we're trying to stay as open, and now we have that spiraling energy coming around this way, and we're reaching those toes long as we do this, trying to stand up as tall as we can on the upper half. Now, uh, if for some reason you have smaller feet, tighter ankles, you can stand up on something either like a, you can stand on a mat that makes the curve a little bit less um, dramatic, um, or this once again this comes with that second little piece, and sometimes you can actually just put them behind, watch that they don't slide, and so that you can actually come in there and get that stretch. So that's going to be a little less intense, and that might be a good place to start if you can't handle it the other way. Okay. So now, if you want something a little bit more um, aggressive, you can, um, you can actually take your feet, and I, I like to, once again, I'm, I'm focusing on sort of the knuckles of my feet here, you can kind of place that ball kind of right at that, the, the ball of the foot there, and I'm just gently laying my foot down. I'm not stepping into it. Once again, it's a little bit too firm to do that. But then from here, I can do a little rotation back and forth of the ankle, keeping my knees straight, and I can just move that little ball around back and forth, kind of feel that movement in the ankle, and then I move it more closer to the fourth and fifth toe, back and forth, and we can do that obviously on both feet, but that's just giving us a little bit of extra feedback into the foot. So 
After you have done that on both feet, it's always nice to be able to try coming up and doing a little bit of um, footwork here. So this would be as though you're going to step. You want to watch it when you're stepping up. We're, we're stepping towards the center of your, the ball of your foot here so that the weight is on right behind the, the, the first toe and the fourth and fifth toe and we don't have all the weight collapsing one side or the other. And what you'll notice is the side where you've done some of that, what we just did, that little small um, mobilization, I'll do it on the left side, I'll do it facing this direction here. So I just took that ball and I just, I just laid it right there underneath that, that um, right underneath my sec first and second toe, and I'm just very gently rolling back and forth. I'm not really putting much weight into it at all. Okay, it's just really the, the weight of my foot. And then I might scoot it over, going back and forth. And do keep in mind, this is a bit more aggressive, um, so if you um, don't tolerate pressure well, um, I wouldn't advise it, um, just doing the first, first little version. But just doing that little bit, that foot just feels, I like to say it feels light and fluffy. Okay, so from here if you'd like, once again you can do this with any of your um, arcs, you can actually come in and get a really nice ankle stretch, okay? And so um, I can shift sort of in and out of this if I want, or I can just shift in and hold. And once again, we're, we're still thinking about that spiraling energy coming from the inside of the ankle all the way around so that we don't collapse into the foot. And you can come in here, hold that stretch, release, do the same thing on the other side, stepping into it. If you need to hold on to a, you know, get in the doorway and, and give yourself a little extra support, you certainly can. Okay? And then it's nice sometimes just to stand on the top of the arc, okay? As long as you are under a thousand pounds on this one. And you can actually walk your feet down. Once again, you want to be safe, so you might be in a doorway. And, oops, I went a little too far there. Good thing it's not a long, long way to fall. But you can kind of walk yourself down and hold the stretch, hold the stretch. So if I actually had something to hold on to, yeah, I can actually do some little, little footwork series here. A little more grace than I'm doing right now. But it just will work on some strength and flexibility. And once again, just trying to keep that... Um, just a touch here. There we go. Having a little bit of that stretch in the ankle, feeling energy spiraling around, and then seeing if I can actually stand as tall as I can with um, basically my, the, the center of my weight coming just in front of the ankle is going to help me with my posture up above because that's ideally where we want to stand as opposed to somebody when they're standing up. A lot of times people will stand and, and you'll see that all the weight's on the front of their foot and then they end up hyperextending into their hips, which you probably can't see from your angle. You'll see them up here. So they'll hyperextend into this position, or they may be here. Okay, they may be in this position. So all I'm doing here, once again, you can do this in the doorway, is just coming up to the top, find the top position, and then maybe scoot yourself down just a touch. And granted, this is maybe a narrow stance for you. We're not right underneath. Um, I'll face you here. We're not right underneath. The, uh, your, hips aren't, your, your, your feet are not right underneath your hip bones, they're a little narrow, so you can put them as far out wide as, as comfortable and just go in there and once again we're not trying to collapse, we're trying to stand up tall and just have that energy all the way up to the top and then at the top with your arms you can do some various arm work um, just to be able to challenge yourself a little bit. Or you can stand and work on balancing right from that position. Okay. So, those are some nice little ideas for the feet and balance and standing that you can take with these arcs. So, once again, I love them. They're great. Um, they, the, the possibilities are endless. So, um, have fun.